Hey Doombots, Tony Scongili here with the third part of the TCP Milestone series. Three million, obviously. So you probably watched the first million, the two million. You kind of know where this is going to go. And uh, as I've taken more feedback, I'm going to go a little bit more on what you should be focusing on once you hit the milestone when you're working towards the next million, the four million, and do my absolute best to give you what I consider to be the best advice. Now, a uh, couple of things as usual. First, uh, please don't look at the power levels of the character in my roster. I'm using my roster uh, to kind of showcase the specific characters, not necessarily the investment. That's something I will discuss as we, we continue. Uh, it's more about which characters players have, and I'm using individual characters to kind of uh, represent whole teams in some way, shape, or form. And we'll, we'll just get right into it. You guys have probably watched the previous two. You know how this is going to go. So to come up with this, what I've done is I've looked at 12 3 million give or take TCP roster reviews I've done over the last year, uh, some being 2.8 mil, some 3.4, just to get an idea of what everyone had. And obviously, events are different. Spending is different. Um, but most of what you're going to see here, with a couple of exceptions, and we'll talk about them when they come up, are what all of the players who are within a stone's throw of 3 million on either side have either unlocked, invested in, or are about to be done. I also reached out to members not only of my alliance, but friends of the stream to kind of just test saying, hey, do you have these characters or... You know, are you about to get them? What's your TCP? To just really iron out this one because I think that the 3 million uh, is the most important one once you reach 3 million TCP because it's the uh, true entrance into the end game. Uh, and I'll go into detail about that in a moment. So as you can see at this point, uh, you can almost immediately see that most people at 3 million have pretty much all of the legendary characters unlocked. You see Invisible Woman, Shuri, Phoenix, Star Lord, Nick Fury, Magneto, just just missing the last one, you know, Black Bolt. But he's only had one pass at the time of making this video, so we'll include that in the three million line in the future, um, as soon as those characters become available to farm. So we're gonna make them representations now. Most of the players uh, who have Invisible Woman unlocked do have at least all of the characters. Uh, in the Fantastic Four Unlocked, including Namor. Now, some of the players obviously were there for the Namor's milestone event, so I don't know if that's going to be true going forward, but I imagine it will as these characters become more and more easy to come by as time goes on. Uh, so it stands to reason that the Invisible Woman and the entire Fantastic Four team is unlocked by most players when they reach about 3 million TCP. Same with Shuri. You definitely have accidentally unlocked the Wakandans at this point, whether it's just having Shuri anymore, that extra million TCP, you couldn't have gotten there without bringing up multiple teams. Uh, Phoenix, with the exception of Colossus, you've probably pulled out most of those characters. Colossus has just become farmable, so it's pretty likely that you're working towards that node if, if you haven't already gotten there, and at 3 million it shouldn't be that difficult, even with the restrictions. Star-Lord, You've been weaning into Star Wars most of the time. If you're at 3 million TCP, you've been using them for Ultron Unlock and whatever you could at that time. So you've probably shifted off of Defenders if you were there originally or if you skipped them completely. You know your Star Wars pretty, and in your entire Guardians team, your BKT, Guardian Nerve, whatever you want to call it, is pretty good to go. Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D., you have them. You know, if you were part of the old meta like me, where Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. Was, were a great raid team... Uh, before the BKT, you probably still have a pretty good investment. But at this point, you definitely have done a little bit of work and unlocked Nick Fury and progressed a little bit more. Uh, you've probably using them as a defense, depending on whether or not you've unlocked Coulson. Coulson is one of the characters I intentionally left out of this because I don't know. You know, I, I don't know how many people who are going to look at this in the future and say, well, Coulson was really hard to get because a new character was added to the milestones. I'm not 100% sure. That said, Captain Marvel is here right now because from what I've been told, there are quite a few people who've unlocked Captain Marvel since her event. I don't know how many people have done it since the milestone orb has been changed. 
but I'm again reporting on what I've seen. It's very likely that a three million roster has a Captain Marvel, whether she be three star or five star because you made purchases. Eh, I'm not sure, but from what I've been seeing now, a lot of three million rosters do have a Captain Marvel unlocked. So we're going to take that with a grain of salt and kind of push forward. Punisher is representing the entire Defenders team. You definitely have them at this point by hook or by crook, whether you've used them uh, or not. Not really a big deal. Uh, they've definitely helped you probably progress through some of the city-specific nodes. You may have ended up working on them when there were less city characters necessary, but ultimately you definitely have a Defenders team at 3 million. Ms. Marvel was previously shown. Now she's definitely part of a really strong Brawlers team, especially if you have Captain Marvel, and as a really great alternate to the Defenders. Here's where the things start showing up uniquely. Uh, Scientist Supreme has become a better character. And the fact that all of the reviews I've done, players have always had a Scientist Supreme, just never really invested in, kind of shows that you're going to accidentally unlock her, and as a result, most of the aim characters, through your play, raid orbs, blitz orbs, however, farming her node because she has a tech gear piece you want, or MRI, I'm not ever sure what she has. Anyway, you're going to have your Scientist Supreme, which is great because that means you can start working on aim if you haven't already, and you could start making uh, attempts to build a team for U7 30%, whether it be the tech wing or something else. She's a very good character in the endgame after her rework. Magneto, legendary, enough said. At this point, it stands to reason that 3 million TCP, you have Minerva. Whether she's amazing, I don't know. But it's very likely that if you have Ultron, you probably have Minerva, uh, at least statistically, and you more likely than not will have unlocked Minerva through premium orbs. As you may know, my free-to-play account, I got a 50 drop of Minerva on my third premium orb. So it's, while lucky, uh, it's not as uncommon to unlock her uh, as some people may be implying. That said, it's still a terrible farm. Fox next, please fix it. Please give anything, anything to make her easier to access. She's a very important character. It's kind of unfortunate that you would get her behind that. Hulk, I know it's weird because you probably have unlocked Hulk way earlier than uh this point but you definitely didn't invest in hulk unless you like hulk hulk was hulk was a pretty middling character for a long time and he's only just slightly above average now but it's very likely that at this point you found a little bit of, of time and use to build up specific characters for specific things like uh, nodes in greek raids or uh, defense characters and hulk tends to be a very good defense character whether you play him on the war avengers team or on some Ultron-based defense. You tend to see a lot of Hulks on, on defense and war. So a lot of players do, whether they've unlocked them earlier, they've de probably spent a little bit more time working on the Hulk. He's just kind of a pain to fight. Thor is representing the Asgardian team, uh, and the fact that Thor is just kind of a pain to get. He was, for a very long time, uh, very lackluster, so no one was target farming him in the raid store. Now that you've gotten quite a few of the characters from the raid store, War Machine, Rocket, you can probably spend a little bit extra currency or you're opening raid orbs. You've definitely unlocked Thor. You've definitely been putting effort into Thor. And whether you currently have the Asgardians or you're waiting for them to become farmable, you know how good the Asgardians are as a team, so it's probably going to take priority over some other things at about 3 million TCP. So Thor is kind of a, a hallmark standout character in that conversation. I didn't mention War Machine earlier because I skipped him intentionally. You definitely have a power armor team at this point. You know, between the characters you've unlocked for one reason or another, uh, you, you have your power armor and you're definitely using them in war because you have Ultron, which means people you're probably fighting have Ultron. So you want to have a pretty shored up fight, which is great because Ironheart has just become available at the time of this video. So maybe you bought Ironheart. Maybe you're looking forward to unlocking her and finishing out the power armor team. Could be anything. War Machine just got a nice rework. He's a little bit faster now. He kind of works really well with the team, a little bit better than he did before. So all in all, you definitely have something going well in the power armor setup. Uh, the last five are strange, and I'll go into it as I show them. The last five aren't necessarily characters players have uh, truly enjoyed using or are like excited about, but they are representative of what you got as a result of unlocking the previous characters or 
what you're working on because through playing the game through gamma alpha or beta orbs or an arbitrary random mega orb you've done some work and we're going to start with vulture now obviously if you have a shuri or an invisible woman you have some level of that team and obviously the stronger they are the stronger your sinister six team is but the sinister six is not a bad team they aren't phenomenal they become phenomenal very 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 high investment and that's not necessarily an investment anyone at three million tcp wants to do but it's really important to note that they're one of the teams that you're going to end up investing in because of how great they are at certain things they uh right now when they know that requires a spider verse they're really good at just beating a boss node that has a spider verse tag on it so they're too, they're basically the power armor for villains um you can also kind of look at it from as strong as they get your invisible woman and you're sure you're gonna get stronger so you're definitely putting some star farming into them at that point you might as well put some gear into them and use them as a war offense or defense team they're phenomenal on defense because they're one of the few teams in war you don't have to boost they pretty much start with two boost uh two deflex so they have two thirds of a boost already so what, what are you paying for a boost to give them the third deflect it's not even necessary they're a, a pretty decent defense team in war they're great on offense too if you can find the matchup if you're trying to punk out defenders but all in all a very good mid-tier team that doesn't really get the credit they deserve for all of the stuff that they accomplish for you ronin in the same conversation as thor you have definitely if you have phoenix you have ronin right and you fart into his stars so at that point since you have phoenix and you have nick fury you just accidentally got a whole team which is the kree minions plus ronin team you're using them as a blitz team you're using them as a war defense or offense team they're good on either side really and uh just you know enjoy them they're a a team that you didn't necessarily work on for them you worked on them for something else but as a result you ended up with the team so use them dr strange more of the supernatural unlock they really kind of ironed out what that team's supposed to do you definitely have a mordo and a scarlet witch at this point you have a dr strange more likely than not so now it's just the other two characters whether you farm them they are in premiums and basics so even though players who have them now probably uh, experienced their events it's still as, as likely as it is that you've unlocked those characters uh through random means uh, as it is that you unlocked any character through random means so it's very likely you either have most of the supernatural at three million tcp or three fifths either way so that's a team that even if you don't have them at three million they're they're on the radar for the next team you're going to unlock on your path to four million um the next two are kind of jokes a little uh ultimus now your ultimus may be like many of the players who i've seen either left at the bottom of their roster and never clicked unlock because he's not great or you've unlocked him but haven't put anything into him because again he's not great and just so you know he's not great but you have him you know either because you've seven starred some of the legendary characters and as a result you've been pulling quite a bit of dupes or uh, you've been target farming him which is very unlikely but ultimus orbs are actually probably still a very high impact for you at three million tcp 15 random character shards especially from that pool is you know at at least three to five days of farming for most characters or some of them are just not accessible in many other places so you've probably at least unlocked ultimus at this point whether you've invested in him that's another story from another time whether i would recommend you invest in him no he's not great he's uh what i like to call a vanity project like when you have so much stuff and nothing to do with it in this game which is literally never you can then start working on fun stuff like ultimus or the next character or mercenaries you know you happen to get a six red star merc riot guard you're like he's totally worth investing in he's not just to let you know but you might uh the last character is hydra grenadier or hydra sadness grenade because he's the worst member of the hydra team hydra literally just got reworked as a result of that you'll find if you look down at the bottom of your roster where all your hydra has been you have probably a good chunk of stars on them just accidentally because they've been in a lot of random orbs you'll be pulling them out of blitz orbs raid orbs 
premium orbs all the time. You'll be sick of them. They're, for a long time, they were, uh, why did I get more Hydra characters? Well, they've been reworked, and Red Skull was coming. So, or it's already out if you're watching this after he's come out. Red Skull's out. And as a result, you just have high stars on them. Whether you've spent the gold to do it, uh, that's on you. That's, you know, the best on your spending level and whatever. And not really much to say on that, but you definitely have the Hydra characters unlocked. They're there. So now at this point, you might be working on them, especially because they've just received a rework. Now, here's something that's going to be a little weird. You're at 3 million TCP, right? You've unlocked all of the legendaries. You've unlocked Ultron, or you're so close you can taste it, which is probably metallic, but you're ready. You know, you're, you're, you can taste the end game. You can taste or whatever this game considers the end game. What are you going to do? Now, I've said before, 3 million TCP isn't indicative of how much time you've spent or how much money you've spent or how dedicated you are to the game or how lucky you were. These, these unlocks where, where these rosters kind of wind up, regardless of how much money you've spent, 3 million looks roughly the same. You know, you may have spent money to unlock Black Bolt, and as a result, you don't have Phoenix, or you may only spend money in this game to unlock legendary characters. But as someone mentioned earlier, I'm at a previous comment in the YouTube video for 2 million, someone said, I have 2 million and I have Ultron and Phoenix unlocked. And I responded with, cool, like that's awesome. But that probably means you don't you went very tall you know you maybe have one or two really strong teams and the rest of your teams are in the 100k or so range you have quite a bit of characters at the bottom of your roster and all of that's great but please keep in mind this game is a marathon it's not a race you actually can't race to the finish line um because if you spend money to get to a certain point you've locked yourself into always spending money which is why there's a boycott going on right now it, it's very difficult to say that there's any one goal that will help you more than anything. Unlocking Ultron or Phoenix, high impact. They're two of the best characters in the game. Spending money to unlock Captain Marvel, absolutely phenomenal. Or Minerva, great. These are not bad things. But if your roster's 3 million and you have all of the legendaries unlocked and two teams that uh, you can use for U6, that's great. But I'll tell you, you're not as productive in a lot of the raids as you could be, and you're definitely not as productive in war as you as you could be. And that's kind of the, the trade-off you've made. That's the opportunity cost of unlocking some characters earlier uh, than others. You are now playing catch-up in one aspect, but you're doing great in Arena or something like that. So there's no right answer. I'm sorry, I wish there was. I wish there was a specific do this, then do this, then do this. But if there was, everyone would do it and then someone would come up with the counter to that and we'd be there forever. So I just want to say that if your roster doesn't look like this or if it's better than this, like that's great. There, there's no negative or positive to that. Uh, it, it's really just a, a, a nice little temperature gauge to see if you're a little behind in something, what you sh could be working on or should be. Speaking of what you could or should be working on, you got another million TCP you got to come up with. You're at 3 million, you got to hit 4 million. Where is it? Now, there are three things that improve your roster. I'm not saying your TCP, your roster. Character shards, red stars, and gear. Those are the three things that improve your roster. So, now you've unlocked all of the characters, right? So we're going to talk about character shards. At this point, you're really just going to start focusing on how you're going to get more character shards, which characters are worth getting to seven star. As a result, who am I bringing to seven star to get those legendaries or so to seven star? You know what I mean? And at that point, it's always up to you. I always recommend characters like Star Wars because you're working on the team and Magneto. You'd be working on the teams that you use those characters for in order to unlock them. Those are great. Uh, Phoenix. She unlocks at six, so you might think like, well, seven can't be that much far away. Yeah, but it's still 1,500 total character shards of characters that you don't really want to have at seven star, at least right now, or don't need to have at seven star. And that's pretty much it for stars. 
you shouldn't worry too much about every single character getting high stars. And since you've probably unlocked most of the characters in the game, at this point, you're just starring up the characters you can and the, in the most meaningful way possible. The second was red star orbs. You have no control over them. We're not talking about it. You can spend more money and still not get them. If the red star system gets reworked to a point where it's possible that uh, you can succeed and use it as a progression system, we'll come back and have a new video. Until that point, red stars are not worth discussing. You should never invest in a character because you have red stars, high red stars in them. Uh, you should invest in good characters. And as a result of that, if they get high red stars, their characters are better. That's it. Uh, third is gear. Gear is strange because every gear level is its own bottleneck and you only overcome it right after the point when you wish you couldn't or you didn't have to anymore. Gear tier 10 is what I consider a character done at or as far as I'm concerned, like ready. Uh, and just for a quick showdown, um, see a character I have at gear tier 10 just floating around. Oh, none. Not many. Yeah. So, I, you know, five red stars, 45K, 6664. Here's an example of a character. I just have a gear tier 10. Could I get him stronger? Yep. I can get a lot of characters stronger. I can get a lot of teams stronger. And that's going to be in depth in the next video, in the 4 million plus video. But for now, gear is still another bottom. Gear and gold, they kind of go hand in hand in the conversation. They're another bottleneck. So, you have to be careful with how and when you spend the, those resources. What I would say is gear up the characters that you need for raids and war. That's where you want to spend. That's where your TCP is going to come from now. That's your only growth. They're going to keep coming out with new characters. And out, over time, this 3 million review is going to stay the same more or less you know they might add a character that's a higher impact but i will have to revisit all of these because i plan on ending this series at four million plus right now there's going to be a time probably within this year that five million becomes the next four million in that uh the end game has shifted and where it became reasonable for you to get characters uh, at some point, it becomes easier. For example, if Nick Fury were ever hit the Iron Man retirement party, obviously you'd probably get a Nick Fury faster uh, than anyone else, you know, especially if he was a three star unlock. So these kind of things will change. But because you're getting characters earlier, you're able to progress in certain like manners and you're going to have different priorities as gear becomes more accessible as they will as time progresses, as long as Fox next, you know, never mind you should be okay. So the next 4 million, going from 3 to 4, my advice is is incredibly simple. Teams. This is this is when you worry about teams. Why do you worry about teams? Because teams are how you're going to do the end game content. Teams are what's going to make you succeed in U7 and some of the Greek raids. Teams are what is going to make you succeed in war you you've now reached the point where you have most of the characters and you just need to use them so your responsibility to going from three to four is that four million is not going to be one new character unlocked at 40k anymore those days are are done you know you're not going to be able to just go oh i finally got this new character you'll get black bolt maybe you'll save up and invest in him ultimately it's still only forty thousand out of the million you have to come by and it's, it's few and far between. Like I said, you can't control red stars, so don't think about them. You can control gear and you can control stars. Work on teams. Find out what teams you need to be on offense. If you watch my war videos, you know I always recommend aggressive as opposed to defensive. But your situation may vary. You may be in an alliance where going defensive is working for you right now. Do it. Go for it. Build up defensive teams. Make sure that your teams are there now obviously a little bit of that has always been done but up to three million you can get away with having one or two strong members on a team once you start pushing plus you know over 60 percent in greek raids everyone's hit points gonna matter everyone's gonna need high stars everyone's gonna need pretty good gear and when it comes to war you're gonna find out that if you're not on the ball when it comes to like one attack one victory or communication you know we'll double tap something you're gonna lose a lot more wars and you're gonna wonder well what happened everything was going great what happened is you got stronger and everyone else also got stronger so now you're fighting people that are producing
other than that, I'm pretty sure this is pretty good representation of where most 3 million TCP rosters are, at least as of 2020 quarter one. Uh, this may be revisited in the future, but the next video is going to be 4 million plus where I discuss the true end game. What do you do when you reach 4 million? Because while there is, of course, a difference between 4 million, 5 million, 6 million, and 7 million, and 13 million, what players do with that is the only thing that makes a difference. You know, what level your competition looks like is the only major change. As far as what you're doing, there's not much. So we'll get into that video next. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you hanging out with me. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangilli, and I'll catch you later.